please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hi, very good morning. You're watching Trading Hour on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ekta Batra and with me is Prashant Nair. Well, we have recovered from the day's low. The Nifty is up around 70 odd points from the day's low. But nonetheless, <coughs> net net is still weak currently. So the Nifty is down around 1 odd percent. We have the Sensex, which is still down around over 300 odd points. And we have the mid cap and the bank Nifty down 1 and 1.4 percent respectively. If you really want to talk about the pressure in the broader markets, you don't need to only look uh, for today, but you have to look at how exactly Exactly, it's done on a year-to-date basis. The mid-cap index has lost around eight odd percent, or close to around eight odd percent, seven point nine percent to be precise. But a lot of stocks in focus, which we will be discussing over the course of the show. We have Tata Motors, which will be releasing numbers today, and we have the likes of Vakrangi, which is in focus. Uh, post the clarification, which in fact came in from the management, but that stock is still weak. We have PC Jewelers, which is bouncing back today, up around thirteen odd percent, and a lot more to discuss, such as Bharti Airtel and more. Hi, Prashant. Ekta, hi. So the market seems to be, uh, I mean, dare say holding on, right? It's not falling apart. Uh, and uh, there was <coughs> a fair bit of trepidation and for good reason because, I mean, on Friday, the Nifty, the indices basically closed at the day's lowest point. Uh, and that's never a good sign because uh, it suggests that there was more selling pressure. And selling, did uh, we did see. But the fact is that we've recovered from the day's low. And we just have now to track whether things hold on. Uh, uh, think, things hold on or they start to fall apart a little bit uh, uh, going forward. What I think on Friday at 3.30 when the markets closed, one did not account for well, the Dow falling 650 points, 660 points or so. Uh, so that was the joker in the pack, which I think uh, must have thrown a lot of uh, calculations uh, haywire because there were many in the market who were saying that if the fall that we saw on Friday was just budget related, the market would recover ve recover very fast. But then you had this global market tanking as well. This morning, Asia, Nikkei, etc., Kospi, for example, they were all down one and a half, two percent. So globally, things have uh, uh, the global equity market picture has become muddled uh, a little bit. Not because of growth or anything, actually to the contrary, because maybe growth is coming on too fast uh, and uh, it's pushing up cost of money. I mean, the fear is that interest rates in the U.S. will rise faster. So that's what's going on here. Uh, so let's let's keep our, I guess, eyes uh, pasted to the global tape more than anything else, uh, because I think that will tell us what happens to the market here as well. Uh, you know, I want to talk about Bharti in a bit. But let's get in Sudarshan Sukhani first up. He's uh, joining us as always on the top of the show. Sudarshan, thanks very much. Good morning. Your sense of uh, things and uh, what's likely to happen today? Yeah, good morning, Prashant. Well, uh, Friday changed a lot. Uh, it does appear that we are now heading for some kind of a correction. And uh, that correction should take us uh, to a support level of 10,450 to 10,500. And then we'll see from there. So the view now is that the short term trend is down, the intermediate trend is changing on the downside. So we should be looking mainly for short selling opportunities in the Nifty. Uh, as the Nifty rallies as it has done today, I, I would advise buying put options, not, in, not selling index futures, but buying put options for February and just staying with it. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that would be your Nifty strategy, but what exactly would be a stock specific call, Sudarshan? Yeah, th that's different because, you know, the markets are having an intraday rally. Sometimes we can have an intraday up move and a larger uh, downtrend, which is what is happening. So today, for the short, for the day trader, I have two buy ideas. One is Infi. In the morning also, I had suggested that IT stocks, large cap IT stocks will outperform and we should be buying them. That theme continues in the midday. So Infosys is a buying opportunity. This is just intraday. And the DLF, <coughs> which is bouncing back from the lows, is also a buy. Again, intraday only. One short sell idea is Engineers India. It's been cracking. But please keep your trades only till the end of the day. Except for the index, do not carry anything else forward. Uh, fair enough. Uh, Sudarshan, we have some questions. Uh, we have uh, Shyam, who's written in. He's got 300 shares of Dabur. He's paid 310 rupees each for them. Wants to know. Uh, what is likely to happen over the next three to six months? Dabur, Sudarshan. Well, the next three to six months should see uh, an increase in prices in Dabur. So my suggestion would be <coughs> hold on to this. Keep it as a long-term investment. Even after six months, you should be a winner here. 
Okay, all right, fair enough. We have one more Sudarshan. Sham has another query on LIC Housing Finance, 100 shares at 570 and wants to know short-term view on the stock. Oh, my view on LIC Housing Finance is fairly bearish. So for the next three to six months, I do not see any uh, significant price gains. Prices will remain subdued. He just has to accept that fact. All right, Sudarshan, thanks very much uh, for that. Appreciate it very much uh, here on the show. We speak with you soon again in a bit. Ikta, I just want to highlight Bharti mm -hmm. because uh, in a market which is cracking, uh, Bharti is uh, rallying about 4% or so. Uh, and, I mean, you know, this really is not the sector which would actually do very well in a falling market. Mm -hmm. Telecom, I mean, for God's sake. But uh, it is. So what's really happening? That's the question we are asking. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just looking at first, let's just set this up in terms of what has happened to the price. The price, uh, the high in Bharti was about 564, which was made on the uh, 3rd of in November 2017. Uh, that was 564. From there, it's fallen uh, basically about 100 rupees to 440, where we are trading. Uh, and the low actually earlier in the day today was 411. So it's recovered some 30 rupees today. What has happened is that you've got a significant uh, sort of uh, sh uh, sh shareholder in Bharti, which is Singtel, which is increasing stake. Bharti's shareholding is basically, there is Bharti Enterprises, uh, Bharti Enterprises holds stake in Bharti Telecom, and then Bharti Telecom holds stake in Bharti Airtel, which is the company which is listed. Singtel has announced an infusion, equity infusion into Bharti Telecom, not into, in, into Bharti Telecom, uh, in which it already owns uh, uh, shares. So that is 85 million shares. They're pumping at about 2,650 odd crore rupees. As a result of this, Singtel's shareholding, effective shareholding, because I mean, Singtel, Bharti, and a group called others, they own stake in Bharti Telecom. And then there is uh, uh, via Bharti Telecom stake in Bharti Airtel. So as a result of this infusion in telecom, uh, the, the effective shareholding of Singtel in Bharti Airtel actually moves up. Uh, let's move on to the next plate. And because of this, the other shareholders get diluted. So Bharti, uh, Bharti Enterprises stake in Bharti Telecom uh, will fall to slightly over 50 odd percent or so. Uh, and as a result, their stake in Bharti Airtel uh, would be what, about 28 percent. So basically, you know, more than anything, there is no change in how the companies run or, uh, you know, a c control or anything, anything of that sort. But you've got a situation where Singtel's effective shareholding in the listed company is now increasing by almost 1% to 39%. And the other promoter, which is the Mittal family, their shareholding is about, what, 28 29% or so, mm. 27% effective holding. Uh, so, you know, more than anything else, what's happening is that this is being seen as a sign of confidence, uh, that uh, you've, got a, uh, you've got a significant major shareholder in Airtel infusing uh, a sort of money, equity, into mm -hmm. the company at a time like this when the stock is actually corrected a little bit. So I guess, as I said, there is no change in how the company is run, but it's equity infusion coming at and a time like this. And what will the funds be used for? Any idea? We don't know. I mean, I guess uh, uh, telecom companies have <laughs> used, <laughs> used for cash all the time, yeah. but <clears throat> more than anything else, it's just a stamp of, I mean, approval, approval confidence yeah. or whatever. Okay, and obviously a lot of telecom companies are in terms of uh, need of funds, <coughs> like uh, Prashant mentioned. But nonetheless, let's move over from Bharti Airtel, which nonetheless is actually the top uh, top gainer on the Nifty, up around 4 odd percent. So do just keep watching out for that stock. But as the finance minister Arun Jaitley completes almost four years in office, Network 18's editor-in-chief Rahul Joshi caught up with him. And here is what he had to say on rising oil prices and its impact on growth as well as on inflation. The finance minister <coughs> with higher crude oil prices and a higher MSP, inflation could become a bit of a headache in the coming coming mm -hmm. months. Uh, are you concerned? Well, certainly we are keeping an eye. As I said, uh, experts tell me that the impact of the MSP would be somewhat there, but not much. It could be absorbed. As far as uh, oil prices are concerned, as I've already said, we are almost on the outer periphery of... Uh, of comfort and therefore if it rises further then of course uh, 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 it, 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 it throws up a challenge as far as inflation is concerned. Market still down 100 points, 10,658 is where uh, we are at uh, and I just want to highlight uh, stocks, I mean I just spoke about Bharti Airtel which is one of the top gainers, I mean I think the top gainer as far as the Nifty is uh, concerned. 
Uh, beyond that, I mean, it's names like PC Jewelers. It's, it's having a wild ride. I mean, 423 is where PC Jewelers is at, 16% higher. It was up 25 at one point, I mean, immediately after open, but it's cooled off since. Uh, United Breweries, the beer company, we had them on air in just, uh, just a while back, seven and a third of a percent higher. Uh, Reliance Capital is up about 3%. But even, I mean, I think it's pretty indicative of advanced decline. In single stock futures, you've got about a handful of names which are uh, up with any meaningful kind of gains. Thomas Cook reported a seller quarter with the travel services business showing good growth. Madhavan, Madhavan uh, Menon, he is a CMD at the company. He's joining us right now. Uh, so thanks very much. Uh, you've seen good growth on revenues and uh, you've also seen margins improving. Could you first lay out what really happened in the quarter? What was the reason for this? And uh, how do you see things panning out from here? Uh, at a consolidated level, obviously after cancelling out for the various effects, our, uh, the, our profit before tax grew from uh, eight, 19 crores to 88 crores uh, for the same period uh, of being uh, the third quarter of 2017-18 versus uh, third quarter of 2016-17. In terms of margins, um, our margins have remained uh, steady, uh, both in the foreign exchange as well as the leisure businesses. And uh, we're pleased to report that we will uh, continue growing these margins, despite the fact that if you look at the third quarter it is not necessarily uh, the quarter in which we do a lot of outbound business, but we primarily do uh, we do bookings, and it's an investment quarter for the holiday business. Uh, Mr. Menon, uh, could you give us an outlook on uh, passenger growth going forward? So in terms of passenger growth, we normally look at forward bookings, and I'm pleased to report that uh, the forward bookings for both Thomas Cook and SOTC it stands currently at 35% growth over the previous year. And some of this is driven by the fact that um, we have, you know, we, we've introduced technology into the process and we're using analytics while looking at our leads and trying to figure out how we can pursue leads in a far more effective manner. So, you know, I expect that this trend will continue and uh, a 35 percent growth in forward bookings is a number that we have not witnessed in at least uh, the last six to seven quarters. Okay. What has the <coughs> uh, performance been from the subsidies this quarter and could you give us an outlook on it as well? So, you know, from a revenue point of view, Quest has already announced its uh, numbers and I will leave it, uh, you know, I will leave it there because I think they've talked to the press quite extensively on this matter. Uh, we've seen an improvement in uh, the uh, uh, the revenues coming out of quests, um, and you know therefore they've been able to book a marginal profit on the back of a couple of things. First of all, uh, their uh, average room rates have gone up, their occupancy rates have gone up, and while uh, they were sort of brought back to profit by a sale of some property. Um, my expectation is that going forward, due to improved uh, productivity within Sterling, that they will retain their profitable position over the next couple of quarters. Okay, and what is the cash and books? Can you share that with us? So, obviously, uh, the sale of uh, this 5% five, uh, 5 uh, in Quest has generated nearly 641 crores of cash. Uh, 641 crores that has gone into our reserves um, after paying off uh, some of our long-term debt uh, as well as uh, paying uh, paying off some of the other stuff we will actually generate cash of approximately 400 crores uh, which will remain on our books secondly I also want to mention that this cash that remains on the books will actually make us debt free uh, because we, you know, we would no longer uh, need any cash to fund both the group as well as our own activity, uh, excluding Quest, of course, uh, and Sterling. But I just want to uh, make a point that in terms of um, the benefits to, the, to Thomas Cook as a standalone entity, we expect that the savings from this uh, infusion into the reserves, which will be approximately 35 crores a year. 
uh, your earlier acquisition, Sterling, I mean, uh, could you uh, want to basically wanted to know a little bit about that? When will it become uh, profitable, that entity? Look, I think Sterling's profitability is going to take some more time. Uh, and my expectation is uh, that, you know, uh, they will slowly start improving their numbers out of the profit, uh, out of the productivity benefits that are, they've started executing. Uh, additionally, the fact that they're looking for more properties to lease. Uh, my expectation is that uh, over the next 12 to 18 months, we will see Sterling back in profitable in uh, back to profitability. Okay, well, spiking up as we speak for Thomas Cook. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Menon, for joining in and taking us through that discussion on Thomas Cook's Q3 numbers. The stock, in fact, at the high point of the day, up around 5.5%. But uh, not to mention that the markets, too, have recovered from the day's low. So the mid-cap index also is down around 165 odd points. So it's down 0.83% as compared to around 1.1% when we started off the show. And similar sort of recovery that we're seeing coming in for the Nifty as well as the Sensex. Let's see whether this sustains, but this is definitely a good sign coming in for the markets buying at lower levels. But Manisha joins in to tell us, um, and she has in fact a guest with her, Siraj Chaudhary, the chairman of Kargil India, to discuss the announcements uh, made by the finance minister on the agri space. Manisha. Thank you so much for that. Well, absolutely. There's plenty that has been discussed on agriculture in this budget. It actually had a very strong flavor when it came to agri and farm there. But Siraj, since we have you with us, a lot has been spoken on the MSP increase. Uh, it's whether or not it's going to be effective, the calculations of MSP itself. But that clearly is not going to be the only thing that would take the farmer's income up or give the agriculture its much needed edge. What have you picked up from the budget and what's your sense on what the government really needs to do in priority right now? Good morning, Manisha. Absolutely, you're right. Uh, there's been a lot of debate and discussion around the MSP and the composition of cost. Uh, but I think the budget is more than just uh, the MSP and the margin 50% margin over cost there. It is actually very comprehensive. It touches upon a number of areas uh, which are not just limited to providing the farmer a price, but uh, it's uh, really about uh, managing uh, the risk for the farmer, which is where the MSP comes in, ensuring a more efficient supply chain. Therefore, there are measures like uh, the top scheme or creating infrastructure, uh, which are really about uh, enablers of efficiency. And uh, then there is about going to the markets, which is uh, the change uh, or the proposed change in uh, opening up the Grameen uh, markets or uh, setting up funds for aqua and uh, uh, you know, uh, the animal husbandry, the consolidated uh, clusters for horticulture. So those are, uh, it's, a, it's a whole package and we have to see it together. But at the same time, while the thought behind putting all this together is very good, uh, it will have to be seen how this is implemented because mm. it's not really about implementing just one or the other. Sure. Uh, all these things have to work in tandem for uh, the real benefits of uh, this very well thought out budget to come through. Hmm. Siraj, that, that just taking a leaf away from what you said, uh, nothing really has been spoken much about the input costs here. While, of course, the FM started his speech with that, but we haven't seen any input cost being lowered for the farmers. Nothing was talked about on debt as well. So the structural changes that we are talking about in this budget and something that we would want to see going forward, how much time would that take? What schemes do would you say need to be implemented sooner than later? Yeah, input cost becomes important because, uh, you know, while we want to reward the farmer or manage his risk by guaranteeing him a certain price, uh, the reality is that uh, uh, at a point we also hit the consumer inflation. And if we want to be an economy which wants to be an agri-export economy, then you have to also deal with the world prices of various commodities that we may be intending to export. Mm. Uh, so I think a starting point would be to examine where we stand with respect to our cost of production. This would then mean investment in better seed, uh, better pest control, uh, the right kind of fertilizer mix, uh, the right soil for the right crops. Uh, so the whole agri input side will have to become more efficient for uh, the MSP scheme to be run and not become a burden as well as not then cause concern <laughs> for consumer inflation. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, you know, we have to bear in mind that uh, we are not or no longer an economy which works in isolation. We're part of a world economy. And while we can play around with duties and everything, 
uh, we have to, uh, unless we get the world market, our agriculture will not get its full uh, re recovery or uh, remuneration. Mm -hmm. One element which has been introduced in the budget and which probably hasn't received as much atten uh, attention sure. is this uh, creating this uh, institutional mechanism mm -hmm. for uh, forecasting prices, the supply and demand, the whole supply chain around storage, because this has to work uh, together with MSP. Uh, the farmer, while he needs to be paid for what he produces, also needs to be advised in terms of what is required by the market, what mm. are likely prices going to be in the future. Uh, you know, if everybody starts producing the same thing, uh, mm. then well, we can pay the farmer the MSP, but the country will be in, you know, huge Depending surplus on of one commodity or a couple of commodities while deficit in the other. So maintaining... Yeah, maintaining that crop balance, leveraging information and sharing it with farmer in time also becomes important in this whole game. Well, that point is very well taken. One final question, Siraj, and this really is about your company itself. While it's really big in, in, uh, in global markets, and you did mention about how global market prices and output also is important for India to keep an eye on, what is your sense, one, on how India looks at global markets, and two, what are Cargill plans when it comes to India? What kind of investments and areas are you looking to for a, for, forward into? So I'll take on the, the Cargill question first. Cargill has uh, promised, uh, this was during the World Food India, we, uh, we estimate an investment of close to about $240 million uh, over the next uh, couple of years. Um, a lot of that has already uh, work which has started. Uh, we, uh, in the last two months, uh, laid the foundation for building a plant which produces uh, uh, transformer fuels from uh, edible oil refining waste. Uh, which essentially is a natural fuel for uh, transformers, a uh, much better product uh, from uh, fire safety as well as tra improving transformer efficiency. We've uh, just last uh, month launched our uh, a new aqua feed plant in Andhra Pradesh. Hmm. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, committed to certain investments. We are improving uh, or looking for investments in the animal uh, healthcare space, animal feed, uh, the food space, uh, building uh, um, storage facilities for grain. So a number of activities. Cargill is a very diversified uh, company stretching from uh, agriculture to food to animal nutrition. Sure. And I think all these areas will find their uh, investments and opportunities and that will cause those investments. Right, Manisha, thanks very much for taking us through that conversation. Well, we need to focus on the markets and the kind of recovery that we're seeing on an intraday basis. It is rapid and it is quick. We are seeing a lot of buying coming into uh, select stocks at this point in time. Maybe we can pull up the Nifty contribution plate to just give you a sense in terms of the kind of momentum that we're seeing. So, for example, Bharti Airtel at the high point of the day, <coughs> up around 4.6%. Tata Motors, ahead of its numbers today, is also at the high point of the day, up around 2.2% for that one. HPCL from the oil and gas space, ITC also, which is seeing some amount of momentum along with uh, Reliance Industries, which is up around half odd percent as well. So looking good right now. Let's